Today's shir begins 15 lines from the top of the Lamed Beis. You might notice a second framed section with, a, with triangles in it. That is the point from which we will be beginning. In our previous shir, we introduced this marking scheme. We are in the midst of different opinions expressing their praise uh, or their uh, description of the greatness of the mitzvah of bris milah, of circumcision. So, we continue with this source, Tanya Rebbe Omer Gedola Milah, She'en l'cha mish nis'asek b'mitzvahs k'avram ovinu. Great is the mitzvah of Milah, as is illustrated by Avram Avinu, no one was as great as he in fulfillment of mitzvahs, v'lo nikra tomim elo al shem milah. And he was not referred to as a complete, whole individual until he fulfilled milah. So that with all of the mitzvahs that he uh, fulfilled, he wasn't referred to by this accolade of tomim, of wholesome, of complete, until milah. Shinemar, his halech lefonai v'yei tomim. Uksiv, and following that posik where you see tomim featured, referring to Avram Avinu, it says, ve'etno brisi beini uveinecha. And in this posik you see bris, the bris milah referred to. So the juxtaposition of phrases indicates that tomim is achieved only with the bris milah. Dovor Achir, another approach. Gedola milah sheshkula keneged kol hamitzvah shebatar. Great is the mitzvah milah that it is uh, compared to it is weight, as weighty as all the other mitzvahs of the Torah. Shenemar ki alpi hadvorim ho'ele korati tcho bris. The ran uh, on the upper part of the ran commentary ki alpi hadvorim ho'ele korati tcho bris. Klomar bris milo sheshkulo kechol hadvorim dahainu kol hamitzvahs. From this posik, you see that the Bris Milah is weighted, is considered like all the other mitzvahs. Dovor Acher, Gedola Milah, Shilmoli Milah, Lo Niskaimu Shemayim Voretz. Great is the mitzvah of Milah, without which uh, heaven and earth would not continue, wouldn't be maintained. Shenema Imlo Brisi Yoimom Volailo, Chukos Shemayim Voretz Lo Samti. If not for the covenant of the Bris Milah, the laws of nature of heaven and earth would I, uh, would not be maintained. Um, my hope is that we uh, remember the similar Ma'amore Chazal that we saw in our previous year that uh, we'll say pattern these Ma'amore Chazal as well. Upliga de Rebbe Eloyezer or Rebbe Lazar. This uh, last point is at odds with Rebbe Lazar's approach to that posuk. Great is the study of Torah. If not for the receipt of the Torah and its uh, subsequent study, the heavens and earth would not be maintained. Notice we're quoting the same Pasuk. And the Pasuk makes reference to the Torah. You'll ask, where do you see Torah in this Pasuk? So you see in this Pasuk, Brisi Yoimum Valaila. We, we see elsewhere the study of Torah is referred to as Vihigisa Bo Yoimam Valailo, day and night. So the concept of day and night is associated with Torah, and if not for Torah, Chukos Shemai Baratz, the laws of heaven and earth, the laws of nature, the whole, the entire creation would not be in existence. And there are other drushes throughout the Shas that focus on the centrality of Torah, the Torah study. Uh, let us just mention the, the basic theme and it's, it's uh, a core idea to Judaism and very simply put the entire existence uh, would not be if not for the Torah and Torah study so contrary to uh, the, the thinking of, of many uh, we'll call them uh, scoffers or doubters uh, one uh, should realize that the greatest contribution that that can possibly be made to to mankind, to the world and the universe, is the study of Torah. The study of Torah is the basis upon which 
all of what we know to exist can in fact exist so that if one is let us say looking to uh, to find what contribution can he or she make uh, for the benefit of mankind the greatest the single greatest contribution would be the the study and support of Torah study uh, and of course the fulfillment of that which one learns learning Torah without the fulfillment of its teachings is something that we look on very very disparagingly so let it be said that Rebbe Lazar's drasha highlights this point that the core of, of uh, universal maintenance is the study of Torah we continue in the Gemara uh, on the side we have a uh, topic heading Neymar Lavrom Hisalech Lefonai Ve'ei Tamim it was said to Avram Avinu that you shall walk uh, in front of me and walk in my ways and be complete and wholesome the Gemara Amar of Yudah Amar Rav Bishal Shomar Lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lavrom Avinu when the Almighty said to Avram Avinu Hisalech Lefonai Ve'ei Tamim walk uh, in in, uh, in f- literally in front of me and be wholesome so just imagine someone saying to you uh, I want you to be wholesome so Achsosirada he was overcome with fear Omar uh, Avram said Shema Yesh Bi Dover Meguna uh, maybe there's some negative f- uh, feature to me something uh, reprehensible that until now the Almighty didn't say be wholesome, and now all of a sudden he's saying, I want you to be wholesome. Well, Kevon Shomar Lo, Vetno Brisi, Beni Ovenecha, Niskara Daito. When the uh, Posik was followed by this uh, statement that I will give you my covenant that will be between me and you, Niskara Daito, uh, he was assuaged, he was uh, quiet, he was relieved. And we continue uh, with the psukim that deal with Avram Avinu here from Bracious Perak Tezvov. Uh, the Pesuk says, and he and the Almighty took him Avram Avinu outside. Omar Lefonov. Avram says, "Ribonu Shalom is the kalti b'mazel shali." I noticed my mazel. Mazel is a term that it's hard to translate uh, but it has to do with my uh, horoscope the the star under which I was born uh, and he said the only Ben Acher Elul Yishmuel and he says I don't have any I don't see in terms of my uh, Mazal that I will have any children other than Yishmuel Omar Lo so the Almighty says say Mitzdagninus Shelcha this is the uh, posuk that we refer to by Yotze Otsa Lachutza, the Almighty is saying, leave your itstagninus, your uh, we'll say preoccupation or your uh, conclusions based on itstagninus, based on <coughs> the study of the stars. Ein Mazel Yisrael. The Jewish people are not governed by that force. Uh, f- uh, traditional Judaism. Uh, that you, the Judaism that you see reflected in the Talmud definitely acknowledges the uh, the phenomenon of uh, star movements and star positionings and and uh, the the whole realm that in English we might translate as horoscope as a reality. Now we're not saying for one second that the column that appears in your daily newspaper or on some um, internet site that features uh, horoscopes has any validity, but the the concept of say forces that the Almighty created that are that he created as part of nature, just like the sun rises and the moon has a lunar cycle. There is also a realm called Mazolus. Uh, what uh, how how they're to be understood and interpreted and and explained that's way beyond the realm of of uh, Gemara markings, uh, Daf Yomi Shurim, and it's a, one would even question whether or not we we still have that uh, that true knowledge to this day. 
uh, certainly, and I emphasize again, it's not that which you see in in uh, popular uh, newspaper columns or radio programs or what have you. But nevertheless, the Almighty is telling Avram Avinu that though there is a force that I, the Almighty, created called Mazolus, you, Avram Avinu, as being the forebear of the Jewish people, are not subject to uh, its determinations. And therefore, though, though according to the stars, uh, it would appear that you're going to have as a son only Yishmael, that is not going to be your reality. In fact, he had another son, Yitzchak. Omar Rebbe Yitzchak. And appropriately enough, you see Rebbe Yitzchak uh, uh, appearing as the next comment. Um, we have a new marking. This double underline scheme is used to highlight the expression kol hamitamim atzmo. Uh, someone who makes himself tamim. Tamim is a, it's a word that I find a little difficult to translate. We, we use the term wholesome, but it has to do with someone who puts his entire faith in the Almighty. You might, uh, might want to uh, use an analogy. Someone, on a, uh, someone who is not a licensed pilot, someone who has nothing, no knowledge of aviation. He, uh, ab- he boards a, an aircraft in hopes of reaching his destination safely, totally relying on the pilot. Uh, so Lahavdil, the Jew who goes through life uh, doing what he is supposed to do, uh, putting his full trust that there will be a an outcome that is ultimately beneficial to him in, in his reliance upon the Almighty, that would be uh, mitamim, someone who is tomim. And that's in contrast to certain other uh, practices, behavior patterns that we'll see in the Gemara. So, Omer of Yitzchak, Kol HaMetamim Atzmo, HaKadosh Baruch HaMetamim Imo. He who uh, behaves thusly to the Almighty, so the Almighty uh, acts in, in a wholesome fashion to, uh, in return. Shinema Im Chosit Tit Chasod, Im Gibor Tomim Titamom. With the with the um, the strong, wholesome individual, the Almighty is likewise wholesome, and everything that that entails. Omar Rav Oshaya, call mitamim atzmo shaw oimedes lo. Person who uh, goes through life in a tomim fashion. So the now literally shaw oimedes lo means with the the clock the clock with the the, the hour stands uh, for him stands in his good stead. The uh, Meforshim explain this as uh, he will reach a point uh, where he, he will achieve greatness. That's called the Shil the Oyle Ligadula. That you can see in the Ran commentary. Shenemar, the Posuk says, Hisalech Lifonai, Vie Tomim, be follow. Uh, in front of me and be wholesome uksiv for yiso la'av hamon goyim and in that context it says and you Avram Avinu will be the uh, the father of many nations indicating rising to Gedula it's also at this point just ponder over uh, Avram Avinu who uh, he came as a uh, upon the the uh, almighty's behest left his entire milieu uh, entered a, a land that was unknown to him, and uh, according to, we'll say, the, the simple uh, uh, the laws of society, the uh, the man was subjecting himself to to a to, to total loss, and yet you see that he rose to the greatest heights that man could achieve by being tummy, by following the Almighty in a wholesome fashion. Omar Rebbe, call Hamenachesh Loi Nachash. We look at Rashi on the upper part of the Rashi commentary. Call Hamenachesh, Kloma Sheroidef Achare Amenachashim. Menachashim brings us into the realm of soothsayers, um, charmers, and, and everything that that implies. 
So people who lead a life like that, who, who pursue the Menachashim, so lo Nachash, Rashi says, Acharov Roifim Nichushim. He will be subject to the the powers of those uh, forces, the forces of of uh, black magic and the uh, charms and the like. To call the kopid kapti bade. The uh, understanding is is that he who is mindful of them will be subject to their influence. As we said before regarding uh, Mazolos uh, horoscope uh, and the like. The Torah definitely recognizes another phenomenon that's part of the Almighty's creation. Nothing exists independent of the Almighty. That is a, a, a cardinal principle that uh, Judaism brings to the to the fore. Nothing in the, in the, exists independent of Him, but He, the Almighty, created uh, forces that uh, Western man might uh, be very skeptical of, but the Torah. Uh, speaks about it time and time again. The whole realm of of kishuf of mechashefa. There's a death penalty for people who practice kishuf, uh, black magic. What exactly it is, I don't claim that we have it to this very day. Maybe yes, maybe no. But whatever it is, whatever it was, is something that would subject the person to a death penalty. And let me assure you that if it was pure nonsense and silly superstition uh, the, uh, the, the, it would be hard to imagine why the Torah would impose a death penalty for someone who practices it so when we see many uh, instances in the Gemara, many references to, the, to these practices the, I think in English we might relegate it to the realm of the occult here too we're dealing with that uh, realm and uh, people who pursue these things, who are, and this is what I was referring to before when we were describing tamim. This is we'll call the the opposite or the alternative to being tamim. Someone who is not trustworthy of the Almighty in a in the fullest sense, but rather resorts to these other things. Uh, in English, we might refer to them also as the the whole realm of superstitions. So people who who uh, assign importance to them, they can in fact be subject to the powers uh, that they possess. Shenemar, the Pasuk says, Ki loi nachash biankiv. The Gemara asks, well, this Pasuk says the opposite, Vaha balamid alif ksiv. The lamid alif means the negation, there is no nachash in yankiv. So why do you say that one who pursues nichushim is subject to it when the when the simple reading of the pasuk would indicate that it's not so? So elo mishum mida keneged mida. Rather, it's because the idea of pre- people who pursue nichush are then subject to its powers is because of the concept of measure for measure. Tony avo bre the Rebbe zera. Ava was a name that uh, Rabbi Zera gave to a son. Ava means love. So Rabbi Zera called his son Ava, and Ava teaches Kol Adam Sheino Menachesh, uh, any person who does not practice uh, Nichush, uh, superstitions and soothsaying, Machnisen Eisei B'Mechitza Shafilu Malachi Hashores Ein Yichol Mikonis Besecha. He is uh, brought into the region, the inner sanctum into which even the uh, service angels are not able to enter. Shinemar ki lo nachash b'yaykev lo kesem b'yisrael and the Apostle goes on to say ko'es ye'omer li'yaykev u'l'yisrael ma pa'al uh, keel that uh, the Apostle is describing that uh, the, the angels will ask of Yisrael what are the workings of Hashem in other words, they don't know something that the people who are low nachash b'yankiv do know. People who, as we say, avoid all these um, these alternative uh, lifestyles and practices that uh, we uh, find reprehensible. Omar Rabbi Avo, Omar Rabbi 
Belozer. Mit ne ma ne nash avromovinu vin stabdu bonov le mitraim osayim ve eser shonim. Why were the Jews subjugated to 210 years of intense slave labor in Egypt, <coughs> which in effect is a punishment to Avram Avinu, that, that his descendants should be subjected to such extreme hardships. Now, we have a diamond scheme. On the side of the Gemara, we have a Nosei Mivne heading, a topic heading with a structural note combined. These Diamonds are seabois, are explanations. Shenenash, Avrom, Ovinu, Vinishtab, Dubonov, the Mitzrayim, 210, Shona, 210 years. Why was that? So, number one, Mitne, Shaosa, and Gario, Betamide, Chachomim. Shenemar, Vayorak, Es Hanichov, Yilide, Beisoi. The term Angaria has to do with a uh, a workforce. He took Talmidei Chachomim and used them as a military force in the battles that uh, Avram Avinu was involved with. Uh, the posuk that's used to prove this is Vayorek es Chanichov. Chanichov are those that uh, that learned from him, and he Vayorak he he uh, cleared them away from their Torah learning. Uh, Rashi in explaining this says Shehifriz al midoisov Shehigdil lisha al midoisov goes bochu. He went too far in questioning or in asking concerning uh, the the uh, plans and the schemes of the Almighty. Shinemar, the pasuk is as the Gemara goes on to say, he, The Almighty had told Avram Avinu that uh, you will inherit the land, and he asked, "Well, how will I know that?" There was an element of, we'll say, of doubt or skepticism that. That seems to be reflected in this pasuk. Uh, personally, I am very uh, say leery, very say hesitant to making definitive remarks. Uh, even in in translating Gemaras like this, we're dealing with the avos. We're dealing with people that were on a extremely uh, high spiritual level, very very close to the Rebunish and very close to the Almighty. It's very difficult to uh, to present these things using uh, using uh, standards and, and, and terms that would uh, reduce them to something uh, sort of a common nature, something that we would feel familiar with. But we're trying our best, uh, trying to exercise the uh, maximum respect due to. The Ovos, these very, very great people, the founders of our entire Yadus, the Jewish experience. So he went too far in in asking the Almighty. After the Almighty expresses his plans, he says, "Well, well, can you can you prove it to me, or can you? How will I know this? Can you demonstrate it to me?" For Biochanan Omar, Shehifrish bnei Adam milikones tachas kanfei ashchina. He prevented people from uh, entering under the, literally, the wings of the Divine Presence. Uh, this concept of Tachas Kanfei might be associated with people that leave idolatry and enter uh, monotheism. And where do we see that Avram Avinu, uh, who was actually very famous for, for doing just the opposite, for for uh, educating the masses to the recognition of Hashem, where do we see uh, he failed in that area? Shnemar tain li hanefesh baruchush kach loch. This is with regard to the Melech Stone, Melech, the king of Stone after the war of the four kings and the five kings. So <clears throat> the Melech Stone was an idolatrous king, <coughs> said. <clears throat> to Avram, you give me the people, and and uh, I want the the people, and you can keep the booty. And uh, Avram uh, gave him back the people. Uh, had Avram kept the uh, released captives 
from that war for himself, so he would have uh, educated them in monotheism and bringing them tachas kantnei So that entire group of people lost out because of Avram Avinu's uh, capitulation to the demands of the Melech Stom, of the king of Sodom. Vayorek es chanichov yelidei beisai. Uh, we saw this Pusik quoted before, and here we have another, uh, we have more droshes on this. Rav Omar Shaharikon Bitora. Uh, this uh, version is actually, would, would appear to be uh, contrary to the approach that we took above. And the Ran quotes two approaches. And uh, they're, they're, the, the two approaches are essentially dependent on the version, the Girsa of the Gemara. So we look together at the Ran in the lower part of the Ran commentary, Sharikan Batura, Zirzon Batura. He strengthened their Torah. He made them diligent in Torah. Loshan Acher. Another version is Shaurikon Hirikon Min HaTorah. He cleared them out from Torah. Loshan Abor Reik, the Reik of Horikon, was to clear something, empty something out. Shalsaben Mangaria, this is the same drush as we saw before. He removed them from their Torah study uh, in order to uh, join in his uh, military pursuits. Shmuel Omar, Shmuel, in looking at this passage, Vayorak es chanichav yulide beisoy, he says, Omar shel rikon bazov, he, uh, these uh, uh, students of his, those people that were born uh, in his general household, harikon bazov means he he gave them uh, gold. He gave, gave them a lot of gold and then uh, sent them, uh, Rashi says, Kedesh Yelechu, and then sent them away. But the word Vayorek in the Posuk is associated with gold as we see gold described uh, as uh, Yerakrak Chorutz. And the same uh, root of the word, Horikon Yerakrak, the Resh Kuf root indicates gold. The Pasuk says, we're going to read just a few of the introductory words that, you, that we have included between the lines, Vayorek es chanichov yulidei beisoi shmoino osor ushloi shmeos. The number in this Pasuk is a reference to 318. Um, we're using a new marking scheme uh, the trapezoid or volcano shape are Memros Shereb Ami Baraba. We'll see a number of Memros of his. Uh, the Gemara, the uh, um, text uh, amendations note from time to time the re- name Romi that will appear is changed to Rebbe Ami Baraba. So we have a list of a series of droshes of his. So in this, regarding this pasuk of Shmoina of 318, Amrab Ami Bar Abo, Eliezer Kenegid Kulam, the uh, number of people that uh, Avram Avinu uh, uh, had uh, had amassed for his uh, military effort is referred to as 318 in number. And as we saw before, possibly those were the number of people that he removed from Torah study in order to, as we said, Osan Garia. So, Ravami says, Eliezer Keneged Kulam, the uh, servant, uh, the famous servant of Avram, Eliezer Eved Avram, he was equal to all of them. Iko Diamri, another version of what he's saying here is Eliezer, who? The Chush Hochi Have. When the Posik says that Avram Avinu took. Uh, 318, it doesn't mean that he took 318 men, it means he took Eliezer, whose uh, letter numerical value, Eliezer equals 318. The Aleph is 1, the Lamed is 30, the Yud is 10, Ayin is 70, Zion is 7, and the Resh is 200. If you add up the numbers, you come out with two, 318. The Yomar Abami Baraba Ben Shlosh Shonim Hoch Ikir Avram Ezboro at three years of age, a mere toddler, the uh, Avram Avinu recognized on his own, recognized the existence of the Almighty. Shenemar Ekev Asher Shom Avram Bekoili Chushbenei the numerical value of Ekev the Ayin is seventy Kuf is a hundred. 
that's and the base is two hundred seventy two is um, the chushbene the the calculation numerical value of that word meo v'shivin utrain. So the pasuk is saying that that Avram Avinu recognized the Almighty for, uh, for 172 years. He lived to be 175. So from age three onwards, he recognized the Almighty. There's a, a very powerful um, statement in this seemingly uh, innocent-looking drosha, and that is that uh, at age three, say even a three-year-old is able to perceive the presence of the Creator. The, the Pesach says, the, uh, the, the, heavens, the heavens and the, the universe it screams Creator, screams the, uh, the, the presence of the, of the Almighty. And it's, I dare say it's so obvious that there is a creator, there is someone who is maintaining the world, the, the symmetry and the, the systematic uh, ex- uh, phenomena that exist in life, in the world, uh, bespeak a, um, a master designer. Of course, the, the, the level of of recognition, the intensity, the the detailed level of recognition will differ from a, a three year old to a forty eight year old to a ninety nine year old, etc. But what the what the, the Chazal are relating here is that um, to deny a creator and a master of the universe is essentially equating uh, such an individual with someone with the intelligence of less than a three year old. And if you want to say that, well, Avram Avinu was extraordinarily bright, fine. So we can say for the rank and file at age six or seven, you certainly should be able to recognize that there is a a systematic designed existence and uh, to think otherwise is, is is the heights of of idiocy for lack of better expression uh, anyone who thinks that uh, the you know even the the simplest uh, realm of creation a, the uh, a single cell creature could have happened by some kind of a random accident uh, is acknowledging the possibility of uh, spilling a bottle of ink and there, thereby uh, a perfectly formed uh, equilateral triangle would result. And just as that would be viewed as a virtual impossibility, uh, spilling a, a bottle of ink, you can spill... 10 billion bottles of ink to the 10 billionth power over over 5 trillion years uh, under all kinds of different wind conditions and ink qualities and paper qualities and you will not have a, a result of the pouring of that ink onto a splashing onto a piece of paper a perfectly formed equilateral, e- equilateral triangle. And let me assure you that uh, that an equilateral triangle is a infinitely simpler uh, uh, phenomenon or entity than anything that you'll find as part of the uh, the, the natural world. And uh, if if you need the assistance of an electron microscope in order to appreciate that, then by all means seek one out at your next opportunity. The Gemara continues, the Omar Rabbi Ami Bar Abo. Uh, we continue at the top of Omid Beis. Hasotan, the uh, word itself is a reference to the, we'll call the prosecuting angel. The numerical value of that word, the Chushbene, is Tlas Mea Vashisin Vaarbo, is 364. Now it appears that this is a a uh, rather abbreviated drosha. We see this drosha elsewhere in the Shas, and the Ran is uh, kind enough to reveal 
uh, what the point of this drush is. Uh, just simply to count up the numerical value of Hasatan, you don't need the Gemara to tell you that. So the Ran at the top line says, Hasatan Bechushmei Tlasmei Vashis and Abahavu, Vimaisa Chamo Shin Samachei, and the solar year is. 365, okay, 365 and a quarter, but it's basically 365. The point of this drosha is that the difference between the numerical value of Hasotan 364 and the number of days in a year 365, that shows there's a one day discrepancy. And on one day of the year, that is Yom Kippur, the Satan, this, this prosecuting angel, has no right to, uh, to intervene uh, and, and offer uh, prosecution against the Jewish people. The Omar Rabbi Ami Bar Abba. Ksiv Avrom, Ksiv Avroham. Originally, he was known as Avrom without a hay. Later, the hay was added to his name. Uh, at, from, at the beginning, throughout a certain part of his, a certain amount of his life, he was in charge, in control of uh, 243 of the 248 limbs uh, uh, in a person. Ulubasov. As, uh, but, and later, after he was circumcised, the Almighty gave him control over an additional five limbs. The two eyes, the two ears, and the male organ. Uh, we'll look into this a little bit further by looking into the Ran commentary. Uh, but before we do so, let's just finish the Maimur Chazal on this point. Eluhain, what are the two additional, the, the five additional um, limbs, two eyes, two ears. The eyes, uh, a person cannot control that which he sees. All of a certain, a person might see something uh, negative uh, all of a sudden without planning. Might see something that uh, would lead to, uh, uh, we'll say, uh, wrongful thoughts or immorality. Uh, and the ears hear things that he didn't. A person doesn't plan to hear. He might hear uh, lashon hara, <coughs> uh, uh, evil speech. The rosh hagvia, the uh, male organ. Uh, we look in the in the Ran commentary. I'm three lines from the top. Initially. The Almighty gave Avram Avinu control over his limbs. Shame Birshusa Lizoy Melvera. For example, uh, uh, legs, uh, arms, a person has control over his arms. Does he, he can decide whether he's going to strike an individual or not. Uh, legs, he, a person can determine, can de- is in control of whether he'll walk to a location that he should not be at. <coughs> when it comes to eyes and ears, they're not in his control. A person can see things that he didn't intend to see, and likewise hear things he didn't intend to hear. And afterwards, after he was circumcised, he was then given, uh, say, I don't know if the right word is control, or the Almighty will say took over and and and, and uh, in, uh, prevented him or uh, enabled, did not present circumstances to Avram that he would be that he would be subjected to seeing things or hearing things that he shouldn't. So that uh, as a uh, as a reward for having lived the life that he did, and also. Um, and also uh, um, mauling himself, and also uh, circumcising himself, this was the reward that he was granted. And you can see this further in the Rosh commentary, uh, on the second wide line, in the middle of that line, he says, And because of the great uh, righteousness of Avram, 
these limbs were given in, given to him. Kidichtiv ragli chasid of Yishmor kishodo misgabe al Yitzrael sofa kosh bochul most rabbiyadu. If a person is successful in 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 warring against his natural we call evil inclination, might call it the natural inclination, but a person uh, uh, suppresses it and, and subdues it, which is, of course, and we mentioned in our previous year, we elaborated on this topic quite a bit, uh, that the uh, Almighty created a world with natural tendencies, and it's the, it's the job of people, and especially the Jew, to overcome the natural tendencies. <clears throat> person who is successful o- over the years in doing so, so, so far, Kodesh Baruch Hu, most of the in the end, the Kodesh Baruch Hu enables him to, to live without having to wage that war, because he literally gives them over into his hands. A person like that is then not subjected to those tests, those life tests that uh, are in fact very, very challenging. We continue in the Gemara. Uh, the Omar Rabbi Ami Bar Abo Mai Dichtiv Ir Ktano Vanoshim Vichule At this point the Gemara is going to be analyzing a uh, Posuk in Sefer Kohelis in the in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, Perak Tes, uh, Posuk Yud Dalid, and as far as the marking scheme is concerned, we've double underlined the quotes from the Posuk, Posuk Yud Dalid and Posuk Tes Vav. What is meant by the Psukim there? If maybe just to get a flavor of it, even though you can see it in textually, let's read the words of the Psukim, just by focusing on the double underline, Ir Ketana Vanoshim Bo Ma'at, it was a small city, with a small population, Vo'ele HaMelech Godo V'sibay Vo'isa, and a great king came and surrounded it, Vo'ele HaMetsudim V'charomim, and he built uh, uh, towers and uh, uh, means of attacking the small village. And there was a, uh, a a poor but uh, wise man in the village. Umilat who has her and he enabled this, this, the the city to escape through his wisdom. And afterwards, no one remembered that poor man. What is this all a reference to. So the Gemara explains. Ir Katana, <coughs> the small city Zehaguf, that's the person's body. Vanoshim Ma'at, Elu Evorim, those are the uh, few people, there's a reference to the limbs of an individual. Ubo, Elo Melech, Golo, Vesibe, Vesa, Ze, Yetzaharav. That's a reference to the the, the uh, pasuk that speaks about the great king surrounding it, that's a reference to the evil inclination, which we said before might not be just described as evil, but or the the natural inclination. You know, there are, there are people, as we mentioned in our previous year, there are people that uh, that claim that they have they have natural tendencies that uh, might not be. Uh, the majority, the tendencies of the majority of people, but they claim that they have, they have these uh, natural tendencies that many would consider an aberration. But based on the fact that they feel that they are natural, they justify their their uh, uh, distorted lifestyle. So that is called the, the natural tendency, the bestial tendency of man. That's We'll call the we can call the Yetzahara. Again, some will translate the evil inclination. And the this uh, mighty king builds the fortresses and attack towers. Those are sins. Ish This is the beginning of Pasuk Tes Vav. And there was a sm- uh, uh, a poor wise man in this in this uh, community. Ze Yetzer Tov. That's the uh, the positive inclination, the the ability that one has uh, to overcome his natural tendencies. Umilat hu esuir b'chokmasu zutshuvu meisim toivim. The milat is to have the city saved through his wisdom. That's a reference to <coughs> to tshuva. 
to penitence and uh, tovim and good deeds. That's the we'll call it the the response to the Yetzer Hara and his sins. The Adam Lozochas Ish Amiskenahu, the Bishas Yetzer Hara, less the Midkar Lei the Yetzer Tov. When the uh, Yetzer Hara, when the evil inclination is having a field day with the person, uh, there, there is no one that remembers the Yetzer Tov. The Yetzer Tov is is ineffective at that particular moment, and that's why it's I I think that uh, in reference to the uh, the uh, Pasuk, three lines above, reference was made to tshuva. That's that's penitence. That's uh, um, repentance after the sins. Because during the time of sinning, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, the yetzer hatov is rendered uh, ineffective, is is dormant, is uh, impotent at that point. So it's uh, after the sin then. Uh, we our hope is that people will will do tshuva, will repent, and 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 do meisim toivim. There is a no concept of a of a person who can uh, claim to be sin free. So we're describing a situation that applies to every person. Ain uh, you can't find a righteous person who does good that does not also sin. But recognizing that, we also recognize the power of tshuva and and uh, accumulating, amassing merit through meisim toivim. shalitim. And this posuk also from Kehelis is explained. Hechachmatoyz lechacham, the that means wisdom uh, strengthens the wise man. Zu tshuva meisim toivim, that's uh, the practice of penitence and good deeds. Measora sholitim, the ran uh, explains measora sholitim sholtim baodam shiroiv meisim adam neasim al yedehem, the the. Uh, We'll say the ten rulers that that rule over man, meaning that most of man's actions are done through them. So that chokma strengthens the wise man. Chuvan meisim toivim are more effective or can overcome the ten rulers. And what are the ten rulers of a person? Eluhain. These are the list. The shteinayim two eyes, shteyoznayim two ears, shteyodayim two arms, shtei raglayim two legs, the rosh and the male uh, or organ, upe and the mouth. Omar Rabbi Zechariah, Mishum Rabbi Shmuel, Bikesh Hakadosh Baruch Hu Lahotzi Kuna Mishem. The Almighty's original intent was that the priesthood should come forth from shame. Shame is the son. One of the three, one of the three sons of Noach. Shinamar, the Pasuk describes Shane as Bahu Kayin Lakel Elyon. He is the the priest that serves the Almighty God. However, Kevon Shiktim Birchas Avrom, the Birchas Amokom, Hotsio Me Avrom. In Shane's encounter with Avrom, he blessed Avrom. Before he blessed the Almighty, Shenema vayavor cheu vayomer baruch Avram lekel el yon kainei shemayv aretz u baruch kel el yon. So if you notice the order of the of the uh, references in this pasuk, you see first uh, the bracha uh, uh, that he uttered to Avram, and then the bracha uh, subsequent bracha to the Almighty. That's a uh, a poor. Uh, choice of uh, ordering whom you are blessing, and for that, uh, shame lost the we'll say the title to priesthood in a, with regard to his descendants. Omar loy Avram. Avram said to shame, the chimakdimin birchas eved lebirchas kona. Does one pr- uh, give priority to the to the servant? In blessing the servant before blessing the master, of course not. Miad, 
Nosno Lavram. At that point, the Kahuna was given to Avram. Shinamar, Neum Hashem Ladoni, Shev Limini, Adoshis, Oivecho Hadom the Raglecho. Ubasrei Ksiv, following <coughs> the Pasuk we just quoted, it says, Nishpa Hashem Velo Yinochem, Ato Kahin Leulam, Al Divrosi, Malki Tzedek. <coughs> now, without translating the Psukim in a literal form, the Posuk Aleph, the Rosh, explains Neum Hashem Ladoni, Adoni Hu Avram Avinu, the Rosh says, Shekar Rishon Lakosh Boch Adoin. So that in the, the Posuk Aleph that's quoted here is a reference to Hashem's speaking to uh, Avram Avinu. And then in Posuk Dalid, you see that Hashem declares, Ata Kohen Le'olam. You are the Kohen. You are the priest. And uh, in Darshaning this Pasuk, Al, when it, in the Pasuk it said, Al Divrosi Malki Tzedek, Gemara says, Al Diburo Shel Malki Tzedek. As a result of the speech, the poor prioritization that Malki Tzedek uh, had, had followed, Vahainu Dichtiv, and it's with this we understand another pasuk which describes Malki Tzedek. It says, and we saw this quoted above, the who Kohen Lekeleyon, and he, but he has a uh, imp- implies a limitation. Who Kohen the Ain Zaro Kohen, meaning Malki Tzedek himself was the the priest of the Almighty. He who was dedicated to the service of the Almighty as the term priest or Kohen implies, but there's the limitation of he and not his descendants. Vein Zaro Kohen. The the phenomenon of someone being considered the Kohen with his descendants meriting that, that is something that was given to Avram Avinu. And as you can see, uh, with that we've come to the end of the third parak of Nadarim, and now that leads us into the new parak. Uh, on the side of the Gemara, we have a topic heading, the Nosei, which reads, Hevdel vein mudar hano lemudar meichel. We're going to make reference to someone who declares through a vow that he is not going to uh, give uh, hano benefit to his friend, versus someone who vows not to give meichel benefit to his friend. The word Michael, uh, I hesitate translating because that could limit our understanding of things, but you can see that the root of the word Michael has to do with food. The Mishnah. Ein bein hamudor hano mechavero lumudor heimenu Michael. There is a, there's no difference between someone who wants to prevent his friend from uh, receiving uh, Hanoa, pleasure benefit, versus someone who re- who prevents through a vow food benefit. Ella drisas haregel the kelim she'ein oisid b'hem oichal nefesh. Drisas haregel can be understood as easement rights. It's the uh, idea of of uh, traversing or of, of walking through someone's property. Get from one side to the other side, so one cuts through someone's property. That's Drisa Saregel. Uh, now the the uh Toysavis points out uh Ain Bain and Mudur Hano El Jesus Saregel says the Mokum de Lokapti Inshi Kagon Biko Bi Maisachama. we're talking about uh easement rights in in circumstances that generally speaking people would not mind. For example, a, a open field during the summertime. During the, uh, the winter time, during the rainy season, so uh, people are not to cut through other people's property because it's going to ruin, ruin the property. It's going to ruin the seeds, ruin the planted items there. But uh, uh, if other than that, if you're dealing with a, 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 someone's courtyard, for example, or a, an un, a non-planted, an, un, a, a non-arable area, 
the idea of cutting through someone's property, a shortcut, that's what is implied by Drisus Oregel. Uh, the Mishnah made reference also to vessels that are not used for food preparation. So we said that th- these two areas uh, would be a point of difference. Practically speaking, if someone said uh, that they're not going to provide any hano benefit, so then the other party would not be allowed to even uh, cut through to use the madiers, the vow makers uh, property as a shortcut, nor would he be able to use the vow makers of vessels that are not associated with food preparation. If, however, the vow was simply mimaychol, so then, even though uh, B cannot benefit from A, maychol, he still, B, would be able to cut through A's property, and B would be able to uh, borrow uh, vessels that are not food-related. Hamudor maychol mechavero, lo yashilenu, someone who uh, prevents his friend from benefiting in my whole terms, so he should not uh, loan to him Napa, Kvora, Verechaim, Vitanor. Napa and four different types of okay, sifting devices, a siv, sifter, a sieve, uh, a uh, grindstone, nor a tanor. Uh, these are clearly food preparation vessels. However, he would be able to loan to him a uh, an article of clothing, a choluk, a tabas, a ring, talus, another type of garment, nizomim, another form of uh, of jewelry, nose ring, possibly. Those are not food related. The uh, Gemara asks a question that we also use as our topic heading. The no say, Mantano, uh, that we've written on this side, uh, paraphrasing the Gemara, Mantano de Drisus Regel Nechshev Hano, the Mudur Hano. Who is the Tano that, that says that something as, I'll say, as minor as Drisus Regel is nevertheless to be considered a form of pleasure? And if, if we consider it a form of pleasure, so that when there is a when there a nether is made that prevents hano, this would be included. So who is it, taneically that views Drisus Aregel as a form of hano, a form of pleasure? Man, now the Gemara text, Man Tano, who is the Tana that holds thusly, Omar Avado Baravo, Rebbe Eliezer He. It is Rebbe Eliezer. Rebbe Eliezer, who says that even very minor benefits are called Hano. So here we're dealing with the, the, the fine line between translation and establishing halachic categories. So we're trying to establish what, halachically speaking, is termed as hano. Well, uh, uh, should be more, more specifically, who is the Tana, and we're saying it is Rabbi Lesser that holds, that even very minor types of benefit will fall into the halachic category of Hanor. The Desanya, the Gemara says, Rabbi Lezer Omer, Afilu Vitur, Osir Bemudur Hanor. Vitur is the following. person goes to a, a fruit shop where the fruit is, uh, is sold by weight, so, on a, on a balanced scale, if a person, let's say, orders uh, a kilogram of, of dates, so a, 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 a weight stone <coughs> might be placed on one side of a balanced scale uh, that is officially one kilogram. On the other side of the balanced scale, uh, you would uh, load it up with a kilo of, of dates. The balanced scale would be equal. And many vendors will throw on the top another one or two dates. 
giving the customer a, a little extra. <coughs> that little extra, that one or two extra dates, is called vitor. Literally, vitor is a person who who gives, who uh, who who uh, surrenders of himself or gives of gives up. Uh, of his own to the benefit of someone else. So this vendor, the store owner, is giving up one or two extra little fruits. In the in the case of uh, Mudur Hano, if you had a, a vendor that said, I don't want uh, people to benefit from me, uh, han, uh, I don't want I don't want so and so to get any Hano from me. So in selling the fruits, he would not be allowed to the the customer would not be allowed to receive that little extra that's thrown onto the top, and hence you can see that Rabbi Eliezer is concerned with very minor forms of benefit as being categorized as hanor. Hamudur Michael Mechavero Lo Yashilenu. In the Mishnah, we saw that if a person uh, prevents or forswears benefiting someone else uh, Michael uh, a list of vessels was mentioned in the Mishnah that he cannot uh, prov- he cannot su- su- uh, supply he cannot loan to the Mudar the Gemara asks the obvious question at the top of Lamed Gimel Lamed Aleph Vaha Min Michael Nodar the vow was that he's not going to give food to the other party why can he not loan to him a sifter the sifter is not edible. You don't eat that. Uh, on the side of the Gemara, we have a topic heading: Loma b'muder mimenu Michael osulashi lo kelim kenapo kavora hani lo Michael heim. Why, in such a case as we said, can a person? Uh, why is a person restricted from loaning his loaning the other party uh, these vessels when the vow was simply a food restrictive vow? The Gemara answers: on, Number one, Amar of Shimon ben Lokish b'yomer. Hanoas ma'acholcha olai. The the text of the vow was that the the uh, the benefit of your food is upon me. And now uh, that okay that text would uh, then include let's say more than uh, strict food. That's the thinking right now. The Gemara asks Amo. Who, the, who is to say that Hanoas Machochalai includes vessels? Maybe it's Shelo Yilois Chitin Vitein Al Makosoi. That what's being prohibited is the the chewing of wheat kernels uh, that are then placed something with a therapeutic value on someone's injury. There's a given over here. You see this also in Gemara and Psachim Lamed Testament Beis as well as Ksubas Dav Kuf Gimel that chewed wheat is therapeutic. So maybe the vow here of Hanoas Ma'achol Chalai is again a reference to something that is essentially a food substance as as uh, this uh, example indicates. But it doesn't include vessels. Omar Rava, so Rava upgrades the understanding of the text. Be Oimer Hanoa Hamavio Lidei Maicholacha Alai. The vower is prohibiting his friend from benefiting from that which uh, brings food to be eaten. What enables food stuffs to be eaten? For example, a pot in which you cook up the food, so uh, uh, thanks to the pot, you can now eat the food. So that's Hanoah HaMavio Lidei Maicholcha Olai. Omar Rav Papa, Sak Peros, a sack for the transport of fruits. V'chamor Lahavio Lov Peros, a donkey used for transporting fruits. V'afilu Tzona Biyamo, and even a a basket in in general is hano hamavio lide maichol hu. All of these these vessels are also considered within that realm. 
uh, the the point here is that is even vessels that uh, are a little further removed from the actual uh, food preparation. The uh, the sack to carry, let us say, the sack that's used to carry grains to the uh, to the uh, person's home. At that point, the grains are still grain; they're not edible. You still have to grind them and sift them and what have you. But nevertheless, even though they're somewhat, the the food items are. are that are uh, transported or, or coming into contact with these kind of vessels are still somewhat far from uh, f- from con- uh, uh, ability to be consumed. They're nevertheless part of this category of of hano hamavili day ma'cholcha. Boy, Rav Popa. Rav Popa asks regarding uh, additional items. Rav Papa just uh, completed, he just finished his list of three items that are considered prohibited in, uh, in a vow of Hano Amavil De Michal. What about the following? Sus Lirkov Olav. Can I borrow from this uh, Madir a horse upon which I can ride to a wedding? Tabas lerospo mahu. What about a a ring that, uh, when worn, so I will look more impressive? Mifsaku mezel baare mai. What about cutting through his property uh, as a shortcut? Well, 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 well I'll, I'll get to a, uh, a a destination faster. A a uh, I'll get to the wedding faster where there is food. What is the status of these items when it comes to uh, Mudar Michal? Uh, the Ran added, in the case of the, uh, the Tabas Lirospo, when a, when a person, let's say, enters a, uh, a wedding and he looks more important as a result of uh, various adornments, uh, jewelry, so they might give him a better portion. What is then the status of these things? Toshma. In our Mishnah we learned In the case of Mudar Michal, he is allowed to receive, to borrow from the Madir, from the prohibitor, these things, and included in which are Tabois, rings. Hechidomi. And here we have a triangle scheme to feature the stages in, in which we want to figure out what are we talking about. So, if you're talking about a ring that is not designed for say, improving your image, uh, a ring that's not visible, it's, it's useful for something, but it's not something that would be seen. So, Tzrichol Meimar, do I need the Mishnah to tell me that if he's Mudar Michal, that this would be allowed to be borrowed? It has nothing to do with, uh, nothing to do with food. El Olav, a filu Even a ring that will improve your appearance and importance, as we explained through the Ran before. And as a result of this, you might get a better portion of food. The Kotoni Mashilo. And the Mishnah is saying that even though he's Mudar Michal, the ring, he is allowed to receive. One says, Lo, that's not to be concluded. As far as the Mishnah is concerned, Lerlem Shalom Leros. I can tell you that the ring spoken about is not a ring that will improve his appearance. So you'll say that why then is the obvious taught? Since the Reisha featured items that a Mudur Michael is not to borrow, Tono Seifa Mashilo, in contrast, the Seifa teaches things that one is allowed to borrow. But not because there's some specific Chiddush in the Seifa, some specific re- uh, revelation in the, uh, the Seifa, but as we said, it's a, an acceptable, say, Mishnah style to teach contrasting points, as long as some aspect of it has Chiddush value. 
which we saw in the Resha, that even though they're not actual food, but they're food-related items, they are forbidden. Uh, and just to repeat, and in contrast, uh, something like a ring that one uses that's not for uh, dormant purposes, though it's obvious that it should be allowed, the Mishnah nevertheless teaches it anyway as contrast. With that, we conclude our shiur for today.